Hello and welcome to my How to Make a Veil class. My name is Vivian de Dunbar. Today I'm going to show you some simple techniques you can use to help you make your own veil. All throughout medieval history and in cultures all over the known world, women covered their heads with veils and wimples. As medieval reenactors, adding a head covering can help your garb have a more finished look. There are many different shapes and styles to veils, wimples, and face coverings, and the techniques I will show you today can be used to make a wide variety of them. Here are some of the supplies that you'll need. Some lightweight linen, chalk, brown paper, scissors, thread, needles, you, some optional items are spray starch, a thimble, a needle threader, pencil, marker, and a measuring tape. I like to use a lightweight linen when making my veils. So when I'm online, I search for handkerchief linen. That's another term for very lightweight linen. If you're lucky enough to shop in person for your linen, you can hold your hand behind it and that'll show you how transparent it is. The more transparent it is, the lighter weight that it's going to be. If you're familiar at all with sewing, you've been told to stay with the grain of the fabric when cutting. So if you're cutting something that's squared, you want to stay with the grain. What that means is when fabric is woven, there's a warp and a weft. When you cut on the bias, then the fabric kind of stretches. And linen, especially lightweight linen, stretches a lot when it's cut on the bias. If you're cutting a veil that's a circle, there's going to be bias cuts on it. So it tends to stretch. So normally when you're sewing garb or clothing, you want to pre-wash your fabric. It gets all the sizing out of it. And it, if there's any shrinkage going to happen in your fabric, you want that to happen before you sew it. Since these are veils that are going to go on your head, and most of the time I hand wash my veils anyway, I leave the sizing in the linen and that'll help it from moving around and stretching when I'm cutting it and sewing it. So it's a little trick. If you have fabric that has been washed and the sizing is no longer in it, you can spray it with some spray starch and iron it and that'll help keep it stiff and in place. And then when you wash it, the starch will come out of it. And you can buy spray starch at your local grocery store. It's just a little trick that I use that helps cut a circle better and um, especially if you're starting off any help you can get when cutting and sewing linen the better. When I'm going to cut a circle on linen it's helpful to have a template especially if the fabric moves around a little bit. Um, so what I do is I take some brown paper either craft paper brown craft paper that I've used at the craft store, or you can take a uh, brown paper bag from a grocery store and cut it so it's flat and then draw it out. Now I have one template for two different size veils. I have an oval and then um, that's for a longer veil and then I just fold it for when I'm going to do a round veil, a shorter round veil and then I just have one template and I'll lay that down on my on my linen and then trace it out and then cut it. If you are making a rectangular veil, which is what I have on my head now, which would be for the ottoman, I use a rectangular veil. I don't use a pattern, I just measure out what I need. For a wimple, I also uh, don't have a pattern, I just trace it out and I keep my pattern in a manila envelope and I just have my wimple dimensions right on the outside um, because one side is a straight edge and then I just I do the curve of it. Okay so I have my linen spread out on the cutting table and I'm going to use my template. Now because I said there's a you know going to be a lot of there can be a lot of stretch with the linen, even though I haven't washed it, there's still going to be some stretch. So I'm going to try and move as little as possible and move the fabric as little as possible. So I'm going to trace out, I'm going to do a small, 
uh, a small veil. Let me just make sure this is straight. And I have some what's called Taylor's chalk in a blue. And this is, uh, I buy this online from a sewing uh, notions store. And this is made to wash out of fabric. You can use pencil. I've used pencil and had good luck with that. But I would do a test with the pencil that you have to make sure that it washes out. Now, I'm not great at tracing. Obviously, I'm a little bit. It's okay if it's not perfect. You can, uh, you can after you take the template off, you can clean it up if you need to. And I'm trying to, I'm not pressing really hard because I don't want to move the linen. So I'm trying to have a light hand. And because this is blue on white linen, it's going to show up real easily. So I make sure that I've gotten all around it. And even though it looked real sloppy when I was doing it, it's pretty round. And you can, again, do your veil how, whatever shape you want to do it. And now I'm going to cut it and I'm not going to touch that much. I'm just going to let the scissors go around and I'll, you know, I'll hold well behind, but I don't want to use my hands and stretch out the fabric because then it's going to warp it and it's not going to be the same shape that I want. want to make sure you have really sharp scissors and these are scissors that I only use for cutting fabric. Everyone in my house is scared to death to use the wrong scissors so I keep these in my craft room and uh, labeled so that they know and this way it's it cuts fabric much easier. Okay so now I have this I'm just gonna cut my end off so it's easier to fold it back up. And there we go. I have my veil all cut out. I'm gonna show you two different ways to hand sew the hem on your veil. The first way is kind of like a bootleg rolled hem. Um, normally I would use just a regular white thread and then you really won't see the stitches and it's just a, you know, a. Uh, regular weight all-purpose thread that you would buy in your sewing store but for this I'm gonna use a buttonhole thread um, that's red so hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit more clearly what I'm doing so I'm gonna take a length of thread and usually I don't want to take it more than the length of my arm because you don't want it to get knotted up it's tempting to make the thread really long so that you don't have to keep cutting and and uh, you know tying off your your ends but you really you run the risk of everything getting tangled up especially if you have a fabric that's really fine and you're using a really fine thread um, that could that could really get messy and of course this buttonhole thread is uh, not going in the needle very quickly I tend to use, the needles that I like to use are sharps, they're, I don't know if you can really see this. It's pretty thin and it's sharp at the end. Um, it doesn't really matter because the way that this, this hem works, you really don't see the stitches too much. Um, so whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you have available is fine. And then I'm just going to make a knot at the end. And like I said, this is thicker, th thicker thread than I would usually use. I like to also to prevent it from getting knotted. Um, I like to wax the thread. Uh, not really necessary for something thick like this, but for the thinner thread, 
Um, a period way to do that is to get some beeswax, and this is just, I don't know, this came from a, a store, and you just pull it through, and it'll get waxed. And then this is a modern equivalent. Uh, it's called Thread Magic. It's some synthetic material. Um, so I just, I use this, it works really well. And just put it in there. Okay. Now the great thing about the hem that I'm gonna show you is it works, of course, great on a straight edge, but it works really nice on a curved edge because there's a curved edge and your hand sewing it, you're gonna be able to move it around and it's gonna lie flat when you're done. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna fold, make a fold, um, and don't worry about it being even to start off. It's gonna work itself out. Then you're gonna put your needle under the fold and it'll hide your knot, okay? So that knot's gonna be hidden. So now you have the fold right here. You're gonna make a little stitch. Just take like one or two little threads and you're gonna bring it down like this. Don't pull it tight yet. Now you're gonna move over a little bit and you're gonna take your needle, you're gonna put it in and pull it and pull it through just so it's at the very top of that fold, okay? And then you're gonna go down straight and just take one and go under one or two threads and then pull it straight. And then we're gonna go one more we're gonna go over a little bit. We're gonna go in on the top of the fold. And when I'm going in, I try not to go through the back. So the only place that you're gonna see that stitch, and with the red you can really see it, is right at the bottom of that fold. But then if this was white, you wouldn't really see it at all. And who's gonna be looking at your veil that close up? Uh, unless someone wants to see how you sewed it, nobody's really gonna notice okay and then I'm gonna put one more down here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it tight now the first with the first couple of stitches you want to be more careful because if your knot isn't big enough it can pull through so I'm kind of gonna be a little gentle with pulling it through but see then it folds over and then even even though I'm using red you can you can really barely see it and on this side even less which is the side that you'll have out. It's just a fuzz. And then uh, you pull up this part so that you have the fold showing. And then you continue. So you move over, you put it in so it goes through the top. And then you go straight down, pick up one or two threads underneath. And then you move over. Now some uh, people, especially newer hand sewers, probably would like to wear a thimble on your index finger and that's fine uh, go ahead and do that if that makes you more comfortable when you've done this a lot you're gonna build up calluses and I I tried to find my thimble and I really couldn't okay so now here I I put it under a thread and it kind of came out so I'm just gonna pull it back and uh, take a few more so yeah, I've, I've built up enough callus that it doesn't, it's very rare that I stick myself so hard that I bleed. Um, and that's usually only like when I'm trying to pull it through something I shouldn't be, that's too thick. But just for regular hand sewing, it doesn't, I don't even notice it. So now I can do a little, a couple more because I'm not worried about that not pulling through, but you don't want to do too many because this is one of the reasons why I like to wax a thread is because I'm gonna be pulling it through all of these different stitches instead of, you know, you could do it every stitch, but that would get real annoying. Um, so this way, if it's waxed, it'll slide real easy. So there, I mean, you can see it's really not perfect, but, um, and you'll see stitches there, but if it's white, you won't see it. So I'll just do a couple more for you. So then after it's folded over, you're gonna wanna pull the fold out. And now see, you just, as you're going around the curve, you just do another fold. And in some places, it's gonna be folded over more than in other places, just because, you know, 
my cutting is maybe a little uneven. I tried to do the best I could with the chalk line. But this way, this kind of stitch, it's it's really easy. Now I uh, do I do this kind of stitch, this bootleg rolled hem on all of my linen veils, all the ones that I sell, all the ones that I wear. If it's linen, even fine linen, I do this stitch. The next stitch I'm going to show you is a real rolled hem, and that I do on silk um, because the silk is so fine, it doesn't really hold well when you're pulling all these stitches. It kind of pulls out, and um, so it doesn't really work well with that. But that'll be the next one I'll show you. And then I just pull it tight. And then sometimes you might want to, if you pull it like that, just make sure that you flatten it out real good. And you don't want your stitches to be too far apart because then it'll, it'll come up in between where the stitches are. So you want your stitches to kind of be close together. And I mean, the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And um, yeah, so this is nice. And it it's nice when you iron, if you iron it, um, you put your iron when you're going to iron linen, you want to spray it with a little water and iron it on the linen, set, linen setting. It'll make it nice and flat and it looks real crisp, especially um, this is great if you're going to bead it later. I'll do a separate video on how to bead your veils, but this is great because you can put your needle in there with the beading thread and it just, it hides all of that. It hides all the knots and everything. And then um, when it's time, I'll show you, I'll show you here how I end off even though, you know, I still have plenty of thread, but just to show you. So what I do here is I pick up a little at the bottom, and then I also try and get it in a little bit, the part that's folded over, and then I just do a little, a little loop like that. And then what I like to do is I stick it in where the fold is, so that it's going in between. So I don't want it to come out on the other side. And then I have it pop out through the back. And again, you're gonna see this real clear with the red, but not at all with the white. And then I just snip it. And it kind of hides it in there. Oops, it's not, that's because it's a thicker thread. It's not really snipping right. Okay, and then when you have to restart, so let's pretend this is a new thread because I've run out of thread going around the whole thing. You can't, you can't go around the whole veil with one, one piece of thread. And I snip that real short. So just like the way we started, we have a fold, right? And we go up so that the knot is gonna be hidden inside the fold. Oop. And so that knot was a little big, it's not really hidden, but that's okay because it's going to fold over. And then we go under. There's a lot of fussing when you're, when you're uh, sewing on something curved. When I'm sewing a veil that's like a rectangle, it goes so much easier. But when it's round, there's just a lot more fussing with it. So be patient. Put on a great audio book or some relaxing music. Don't be in a rush to do it. Try not to do this the night before you need to wear the veil. I know, impossible, right? And then again, we're just gonna pull it through. And there we go, hidden. And then you keep going. So that's all there is for this uh, I'm sure there's a better name for it, but I just always call it the bootleg rolled hem. Okay. And there you go. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to do an actual rolled hem. And like I said uh, previously, for uh, this is a lightweight linen, um, I would, I really wouldn't do this on the, on a lightweight linen. I would do it on a very, like silk gauze. Sometimes I make 
uh, veils and wimples with silk gauze and pulling the thread, making the stitches and then pulling them is really, it's just gonna pull right through. So this is a little bit more work because you're actually gonna be doing the rolling yourself, uh, but it's it works much better with a fine fabric. So now I would again use white thread uh, or a thread that matches the color of the veil, something really thin, maybe even thinner than this if I was doing uh, a gauze. You wanna try and match the thread size of your of the fabric that you're working with but for you I'm gonna I'm gonna use this thicker red and I'm just gonna do this I'm not gonna double it like before so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna uh, you know thread it and then I'm just gonna leave it as a single I am gonna put a knot um, it's personal preference you can do it without a knot and then just back stitch it but especially for this this is just a sample. I'm going to put a knot in there. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, lick my fingers. That's it's just the way that it works better for me. And the start, like any fiber or fabric project, starts always the hardest. So you just want to get some in there. And um, you're going to use more of a seam allowance than you did with the other one because you want to make sure you have a good amount of roll on this and again because we're hand doing this you can play around with this to get this how you want and um, especially with silk gauze if you've ever tried to sew with that there are so many flyaway fibers and it's really annoying to work with that the veils are gorgeous when you use a silk gauze, but let me tell you, it uh, sometimes you have to wonder if it's worth it. So I don't suggest, if you are new to hand sewing, um, to jump right into using something really fine. I would I would start with the linen. So now once you do it, especially if you wet it, it's gonna it's gonna stick pretty well. And now that we've got this going. So just like in the previous video, I'm gonna try and hide my my little knot there, which actually is not so little, it's kind of big. So I'm gonna cut the tail off before I get it in there. If I cut, if I sew it and then cut the tail off, I, I risk cutting my veil, which don't wanna do. So I'm just gonna kinda of get it in there and try and hide it underneath. So really the work on this is all uh, ahead of time. Hopefully this is, you're going to be able to see this. You do the rolling ahead of time, then you're just going to take little, you know, a thread or two. Oh, and also you wanted to condition this thread. Um, this is the same thread I used on the previous veil, so I didn't need to condition it with the wax, but you would do that, you know, you want it to go smoothly. Then you just take one or two threads there so this keeps you from having to do that pulling of the stitches, which in something thin is just, it's, it's going to be a mess. Okay, so I'm going to try this at a different angle. I was having a hard time keeping my, my veil in focus, so we're rolling. Let me just roll a little more, you know, and as you go, you're going to, you're going to check and make sure you're keeping it straight. So I'm just going to go, I had left off my sewing on the roll. So then I'm going to pull up some stitches underneath and then I'm just going to pick up some little bit of stitches from the roll and I'm going to, you know, try and keep my stitches really small. and close to, as close together as I'm comfortable with so that it stays sturdy but doesn't add too much bulk and so you can see there's a lot of you're seeing a lot of red but on the other side it's going to look really nice and clean
there's just going to be the little stitches right underneath the roll just like in the previous one but this is going to have a it's going to be a little bit more rounded on the end okay so I'm going to show you how how I'll end off or pretend that my my thread is at the end of the line so I'm just gonna like I did before I did a couple of stitches at the bottom I'm gonna just take a little bit of the roll and then I'm gonna put it through to make a little knot and then I'll go backwards from where I already put it in a little bit have it come out just so that the end will be hidden in the roll of the hem and then carefully clip it and it doesn't matter um, if you go to the left if you sew it to the right if you you're more comfortable sewing it like this or I'm doing it upside down it's really whatever is comfortable for you the end result should be the same um, you want to do what's what's the most comfortable thing for you and your ergonomics so now I'm gonna kind of go in to hide my knot if I was starting my new thread just like I did earlier oops see I forgot to cut that off so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it away from the veil there you go because trying to cut it really close taking a chance and then you continue just like you didn't you know as if you hadn't cut it off grab a little bit underneath and then continue around okay so now I'm going to demonstrate doing the rolled hem on some silk gauze since I mentioned it so you can see the difference the material makes this is uh, this 100% silk it's a gauze material it's very sheer um, slippery it was a little bit difficult to cut because it moves around a lot I didn't draw it out with the chalk because it would even slide that much so what I did is I just put my pattern over it and then just cut around the pattern and then took the pattern off and kind of just cleaned it up eyeballed it it's not incredibly straight um, but it'll you'll see that I'll be able to work that out in, in rolling the hem and then um, the more you handle this the more little fraying is going to happen at the edge and if you have too much fraying then take some sharp scissors and trim it off um, even as you're working just stop and trim it off because if you have really long flyaways and you roll it it'll be sticking out of the roll and you don't want that to happen um, so luckily I haven't worked with it too much so I don't have too many flyaways so let's just get right to it I'm just gonna lick the old fingers and uh, start rolling this is nice because this gauze is it's not really um, slick like if you have a china silk it's like really slick and slides this because it's the gauze it has a little bit of a, like it's a raw silk so it it has a little bit of a grip makes it a little bit easier to do the roll but you can see that the roll that I have here is much thinner than what I was getting on the linen um, and so because of that I'm not going to use the red buttonhole thread I'm just going to use some red thread because uh, the buttonhole thread is just going to be a little bit uh, it's not going to give a good look so I want you to see what it'll look like but again I'll use red thread and then I don't need as long a piece because I'm not going to double it I remember I'm just going to put it put it through the needle so that it has a long tail let me get it through there we go and I'm going to knot one end and you definitely want to condition it to go through and uh, because when you're working with silk anything it snags easily sometimes if my hands are really rough I'll even uh, do a like a scrub first on my hands to get any you know you have any calluses or anything it just makes it easier 
Okay, so now you definitely want to condition a thread. You can use the beeswax. I, I prefer, unless I'm entering it into an ANS competition, I will use the thread magic just because it's clear and it's uh, made so that it it definitely doesn't stain, but obviously man-made material. Okay, so I prefer to work upside down on the roll. Again, your preference. So I just want to get a really good start. And it, it, this is uh, very fussy, so I I don't recommend you start with silk gauze for your first one. So now I'm going to hold it so that it uh, doesn't unroll. When I did the rolled hem on the linen, it kind of stayed, and I had more time to work with it, but this is not uh, staying as much. It just kind of springs back. So I'm just going to hold it like that and then try and get it through. There we go. I'm not going to pull it too tight. And then I'm just going to try and get, and this might be really hard to see because it's all so fine, but you'll at least see the motions that I'm going through. And I'm going to try and keep my thread out of the way. And my natural inclination is to bring this super close to my face so I could see it, but then you won't be able to see it on camera. So I'm not doing that. So this is probably not as neat as I could normally get it. Especially as I'm uh, someone who wears glasses, I really do need to adjust my distance to get in the right focal point. But you can see, basically, I'm doing the same thing as before. And, you know, lick fingers as needed. This is going to take me a lot longer. Because it's more fussy, there's a lot more playing around with it. And holding it and making sure it's even. But like I said, uh, it's really nice. Especially if you want to show off your hairstyle underneath. That didn't go through. Okay, so everything else is the same as I showed you in the previous. I just wanted to show you the different the difference in the types. So then again, it's real sloppy, but you only see where I took the stitches underneath the roll. And if I were to do that in white, you would you wouldn't really see it too much at all. So now I'm going to show you some of the finished products. This first veil is a linen veil in which I did the actual rolled hem, so the second, the second version of the rolled hem that I showed you um, took much longer, but the results are pretty good. And so you can see with the white thread, you don't really see the stitches. Maybe you see it um, just a little bit of an indentation in there, but if you were wearing this, it would not be noticeable at all. And based on what you've witnessed me with the red thread, my stitches are not as even as I would like them to be. But in the end, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. So I encourage you to give it a try. Of course, the more you do it, the better you'll be. Um, so that's the linen. Now I'm going to show you the rolled hem again. This the second technique that I showed you on the gauze veil. And this really, would, there's the only way to finish this is I think is with the rolled hem it, it's not incredibly neat um, you know I haven't ironed it or anything but it really does look very nice at the end it gives a little bit of a weight but yet it still has to fly away and again with the white thread you can't you can't see the stitches so that's that's my version of the rolled hem on the silk gauze a little tricky to work with um, now that you know how to use this technique, you don't have to just do it on veils. You can really do it on anything. So here's a handkerchief, which is a great way to use up scrap linen. Um, so I always save my scraps and make either linens, and I'm going to show you a cup cover. So this is the first technique that I showed you when you do the rolled hem by doing the fold over. 
and again with the white thread what I usually do is in the corner or in the center I put a little bit of an embroidery you can put initials or you can put a design I've done this as uh, a prize for a tournament you can put what the tournament is or uh, something that has some meaning to it you could give it as a gift you could make it a favor anything you want or just just like this if you want to use it as a regular old handkerchief I like to use these especially at events instead of using uh, a Kleenex and then here I have a cup cover so I haven't done the embroidery yet I have the the picture drawn out in pencil so this is done round and then when I'm done I'm gonna put some beads on it not exactly even again I I have to iron it and finish it and then you put the beads on it to weigh it down and it goes over your cup and it weighs it down and really nice and then you don't get bugs or bees or anything in your in your cup and just the same simple technique so anything you can think of um, that's a, a you know how to do a hem on it Awesome. Shoot.